Hello. So, this is once more a new foil. What did I change? Um, in the previous foil, the wobbly wiggly stuff stopped here. Uh, now everything is wibbly wobbly. But that's not the main thing. Um, I used Super Super 77 this time from 3M instead of my cheap cheap spray glue. I must say, first off, I should maybe uh, like shake this can far more because it gives a better spray pattern. Uh, another thing I noticed: everything is covered in it rather easily. I was not even near to some places, but still my mouse, everything is like sticky now, which is quite annoying in a shed where a lot of dust will be made. So everything will be covered in it. Um, another thing is, it is really sticky, like really, really sticky. As far as I know, uh, 77 can also be used or like temporarily mount stuff but it doesn't feel like it because it's uh, really aggressive in tackiness so I think the tackiness is even more extreme than a double layer of the cheap glue so I wonder if single single sided is, is enough actually I think it might be but we'll see this is at least double sided so glue on the mylar, glue on the foil and now the question is can I remove this once uh, one thing the mylar that surrounds the coil had backing or had like glue on it and the cutting mat because I sprayed the aluminium on the cutting mat also has now this 3M stuff on it so I wonder how um, how well that sticks so let's see Oh, this is doable. This is, you know, this is like this piece here has glue on it, both on the mylar and on the cutting mat, and it's really strong. This is doable. I didn't push it in if I did, like for instance, here. It is a contact adhesive, so. You can get it off, but it's rather strong. Uh, the nice thing, I hope at least, when uh, using two kinds of glue, I use the cheap one to spray the cutting mat, and it releases earlier than this bond. So you can, at least you should be able to get the foil off without separating the aluminium from the mylar. I don't think that's gonna happen with this combination, to be honest. No, it doesn't. So yeah, that looks, that looks awesome. Cool. Because I got all the stuff in house now to create a test panel, I wanted to make one more membrane, or maybe two even. Before I uh, remove the cutting mat and install the the normal spindle motor. Now I'm not sure if you can see but here is where the foil set. Here <laughs> alongside is 3M77. So the overspray was really, it's like it sprayed the whole table including some other stuff. So yeah, it's wasting a lot of glue. The spray pattern I had on high which might be a bit <laughs> you know, too big apparently. 
I tried medium outside when I sprayed the mylar, still rather wide, so I'll use uh, small, I guess, to not like um, add glue to like everything. Or do it in one go. Maybe it maybe it's possible if I put it on high and just do one stroke or two strokes and be done with it. That would be nice. But now I, I might have a problem that this is sticky now, but I'm not sure how sticky it is. Maybe too sticky. Another thing is I tried cutting aluminium now like six times in a row without having glue on it first and that's key in this case if you want to cut thin foils you have to otherwise it will rip and it will fuck up so out of six times I tried it only when I did apply glue because I thought well hmm this might be the case that it's ripping easily because it doesn't have something on top of it just like the paper aluminium or something uh, and after that it went okay in one go so it is needed I made finally the MDF uh, something I don't like because I'm allergic for MDF or at least the dust uh, I still need to make more parts but I made a few like this one that can fit in here or it should be able to fit in here oh it's a tight fit I must be so a little bit too tight so I might it fits but I could leave a little bit more <laughs> you might be thinking what the fuck are you doing well Yeah, so it's a little bit too tight, but this is a magnet jig. So I can uh, glue in magnets consistently uh, on the metal in the end. I mean, there's no metal right now, but the only downside is that getting it off might be a huge problem. Let me check that. So I got some steel. See if we can get it off. Oh well that that went easy. So let's pretend we glue in these magnets like this. Is this in frame? I don't know. Yes it is. And then this one the other way around. And now remove the inner part of which I'm not sure that works. So yeah, this frame should be like that. So I might need to skim off something here to make it fit a little bit more sloppy. The other um, idea is uh, I'll put the metal where it's supposed to be like this and then at the back side of this part unscrew the metal and then remove the outer shell and the rest of the frame which gives me a little bit more ease of removing this one. But it's nicer, of course, if um, you know, it's nicer, of course, if it can remain. So the pockets for the magnets are perfect. This is just a little bit too big. I need to change that. Although I only need like one or two of these one is enough I don't you know I'm not gonna make these every time so I'll probably 
put it on the belt sander and sand something off around this. Okay, but that works, so that's nice. Now I get the frame. So, the only downside, I'm not gonna use the ribbon tweeter as of yet. I might be uh, later on, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I just incorporated in this piece just for fun and giggles. I mean, the problem I'll explain later on, but I will focus on this membrane first. Because if this one is installed, I cannot tune the other one, which is kind of stupid, but that's the way it is. I mean, there's not enough room. So I won't be gluing these in, but in the end, they should fit like here, all along here. And then that will make the ribbon. In the Apogee, they used a steel structure, which is also nice, but I don't own a welder, so... Or else I would have done that. Now these are gonna sit here. And one on the opposite side. Well, anyhow, huh? you got the idea. Connection for the ribbons. Now these big holes. They should be around seven millimeters, but they look a bit large. Let's see. I got a few of those. Mm -hmm. So they should be able to fit in here completely without problem. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I discovered. Uh, so M this MDF is really shitty, so this is not ideal. I could, what I could have done is like put some uh, cyan acrylate in these and then use the inserts. But mostly I need to kind of To make it flush. Same goes for these. Hmm. This is too small. This is too large. Now I should be able to get these a little bit deeper. So they are flush with the wood. You learn as you go. Still, I would love some some glue or something. So this one is standing proud a little bit. Then we got smaller ones. This is M5 for the tweeters. Ooh. That's a tight fit. So this is too tight, apparently. It, well, it will sit like strong, but I need to sand the, uh, the MDF here because it like comes upwards. I need my other knife. Where's my blade? Well, you got the idea, I think. Uh, 
It's because it's cheap MDF, it's, you know, not the best. Here and uh, well, same story here. Still not sure if this is the best best method to connect an aluminium ribbon to a copper piece. Um, it worked so far for me, but I might as well order these from where I order PCB from and have it gold plated. That might be better. Anyhow. I'm not gonna play with the ribbons um, anytime soon, but... So, and then Diggy's points here can hold a... What is it? Connection terminal thingy? They're even... They're still larger than I thought they would be. I thought I'd do a small test panel, but they're still rather large. I mean... It's definitely never gonna play full range or something, but so this is one half. So what you're looking at here is the front side, because there should be another half like this going over it if you want to have it look nice. And this is the side where the final element or steel is gonna sit. Now I cut the steel for a slightly larger panel. And I did not cut like the recess for the steel yet, but it will be sitting like something like this. And then this will drop in. But this is the back side. Okay. Then I got some uh, other parts. Tiny parts. This is the clamp for the top of the membrane. This is the clamp with a recess. Sorry. Clamp for the top. And a clamp for the bottom with a recess. You can see here. There's gonna sit some foam, not this foam tape, but some foam tape. It's gonna sit like here. Hmm. How deep is this cut? Because this looks a bit deeper than I would like. Maybe the foam is different. Ah yeah, the foam is different. So this is actually the foam I'm gonna use, and it's slightly thicker. So we'll be sitting like this. Might as well cut it. just came in today. It's not the foam that I wanted, but it will do for now. Same goes for this line. There's gonna be sitting foam. So I need to compress the foam quite a bit. But I think it's doable. I hope so. So these are not those have like uh, no reference or something. It's just gonna use wood screws and burp burp. Not sure if that's a good idea, but that's what I uh, thought I'll use for now. Uh, then there are two pieces that will form a clamp. Anyhow, uh, you can clamp this one on here. And it will uh, hold the ribbon, so you can like move it around before you glue it down. If you watch the video of a apogee, then you know what these will do. Then I made like a tool, and I'm not even sure if that works. It's a tool with a slot, 
and you can fit a piece of 80 millimeter MDF in here. It's not this piece that I will uh, use, but and then you can drill the holes through the piece of MDF at the correct location. When it's gonna sit like here, you need holes in this direction and the CNC cannot cut, cut that. So instead of like marking and fucking around, I'll, I, I made a tiny tool to do, to do it like nice and neat. I mean, it's temporary, it's MDF, but you know, this is all temporary. So it's quite a lot of work for a temporarily test thingy. So that's the batch of first pieces and I need to make a second batch and then I have to mill the backside of this version. <sighs> and I made a few membranes, so good day. See you around, bye bye.